unfortunate because even he himself now fell into the trap of discussing the leadership of the EFF uh, with the with the journalist. A matter that has been raised with him and he has been reprimanded strongly that it is not done in the EFF to be excited and run all over the media. He has since apologized and we, re we accepted his uh, uh, apology. Thank you very much. Let's take the first round of questions, guys. You can. <laughs> wow. In line with the uh, last remarks uh, about who's contesting who, I would like to ask all five of you individually, are you available, are you available, are you available, are you available, are you available? Are you available? I can answer for all of them, they are available. Yeah. <laughs> all of us are available. Okay. All I'm members asking. of the EFF are available. They will be raised from the floor. They will accept the nomination. And the chair, are you contesting for the president? <laughs> no. Uh, this has been explained. You know the problems that you look at it as the ANC process, where there are nominations in the provinces and so on. We don't do it like that. The president has just explained. It's done from the floor. Of confidence. of confidence. You know why we do it like that? So when people nominate from the branch, they fight at the branch. Then they go and fight at the region. Then they go and fight at the province. Oh. Then they come here fighting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they conclude the fight here. Mm -hmm. So we want them to fight once. Yeah. Fight, <laughs> and before you know it is done, exactly. we all back, go back home. Yes. So there is no permanent picture mm -hmm. of a party in conflict with itself. So all of them. It doesn't mean they didn't discuss. I mean, Colin's video uh, 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 somehow tries to tell you that there is some discussion, you know, uh, uh, taking place in the in the EFF. So those questions will be asked, answered in front of the whole country. Yes. They'll say, Mr. Malema, are you available? And they, they will be there. They play the the, the session will be open, exactly. and then uh, the IEC uh, uh, will will ask us individually. Mm. Uh, we are available, we are available, we may not be available for certain positions uh, which may be beyond our capacity. For instance, I can't write uh, minutes, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so if there is a command such things, or treasurer, or, 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 or president, or, or, you know, so we'll deal with that. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Um, so just on that again, if you are nominated on the floor, for the position of president, are you available to accept it? Would you accept it or are there okay, certain say positions again. you're not? Let me say it again. Those questions will be answered in front of the entire country. When we say, this is how it's going to work. I raise my hand, I nominate Mr. Julius Malema for the president. Then they go to him, Mr. Malema, are you available? Yes or no? Then the whole country will know. So we can't now, if we want to start factionalism, we start answering those questions that you're asking us now. Because now it's going to be, oh, so-and-so is available. No, this one is not available. This organization will never be factionalized. So all those in the media who are trying to factionalize this organization are going to fail. Because we have no time for factions. We have time for contestation if we contest, or no contestation if we don't contest. And contestation must never be confused with uh, factionalism. Okay. okay, um just two questions from me, CIC. Um you're going to Nigeria. Yes. Perhaps just please um tell us about your visit there and the significance of that visit. Secondly, last week we said you were in studio and you spoke about the partnership between the EFF and the DA. Um the EFF had said they, they will consult and get back to us. So in light of the report, the organizational report from the DA saying that it was a mistake for the EFF and for the DA to actually get into a partnership what then will now happen and then has the ANC tried to reach out to the EFF in terms of forming something within the city of Johannesburg? Well, uh, I just landed this morning uh, from Baku, uh, from a non-aligned movement summit uh, representing PAP, but also going to sell the gospel of uh, the EFF. Uh, we are continuing with that work. We are now going to Nigeria. Uh, we'll meet uh, different uh, stakeholders, uh, members of parliament, uh, different governors, uh, different organizations to try and sell the EFF International. Uh, we have taken a conscious decision to engage uh, with the international community because uh, some of us are ashamed that 
SG's report is going to be very empty when it comes to international relations. We have not done very well. And uh, it's a responsibility we must accept that uh, when we assume responsibilities in the political formations, we should know what it entails. And we should take those responsibilities with seriousness. Uh, a lot of interest has been shown uh, in the continent and international uh, towards the EFF. But the EFF doesn't grab that opportunity with uh, both hands. Uh, and I don't understand. Maybe the SG, when he gives that report, he will explain why did we fail to appreciate the fact that the continent and the international community, including the diaspora, is receiving the EFF very well, but the EFF is not uh, responding. In the discussion document, one of the areas we are raising is perhaps to get a full-time person to deal with international relations. Uh, because you can't call yourself an internationalist, yet you've got no presence in the other you know, international platforms. And people are beginning to understand the EFF the way they are being told by the media as a fascist organization, as a racist organization, uh, as an anarchist organization, that Marxist-Leninist international character of the EFF disappeared because of laziness and the ability to appreciate that uh, we cannot be an internationalist movement but spend most of the time in Alexander. Uh, uh, we, we ought to locate the struggles of Alexander into international uh, politics. What's happening? in Lebanon, what's happening in Chile, what's happening in Venezuela, what's happening in Cuba, in Zimbabwe, uh, and all, all over the world, should be understood so that we don't think we exist uh, in isolation. Uh, so that's the work I, I, I will be doing in the next few days towards the, 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 the conference of the EFF. Um, you know, I, I get somehow worried that every time there is a position available in the municipality. People talk about giving it to the ANC and the DA, including some leaders of the EFF. When you talk to them, they say, no, there is that type of MMC in DA, maybe, maybe not. But they never talk about the EFF. I don't understand. I don't understand why people are not talking about the EFF. After the EFF said, we are ready to govern. Leaders of the EFF tell you about other MMCs from other political parties. The media ask you about the ANC and the DA. They don't ask you about the EFF. <coughs> so I think that we, we ought to look at this thing broadly. You know, opportunism is going to kill this movement. If we can start identifying talent amongst our own comrades, where did Mashaba get experience from? Where did Soli get experience from? And that new one who wears ugly suits in China. <laughs> what is Mukhalapa? Where did he get the experience from? We've got now well experienced leaders of the EFF in municipalities. And we're never told about those leaders. We're told about something else. So I don't want us to reduce the debate into uh, DA or ANC. And I'm not going to be here this afternoon when the War Council will be sitting. And I was not there when the Central Command team said last time because I wanted to propose that the EFF must contest. And it must contest without talking to anyone. We must contest. If ANC is contesting, DA is contest, why is the EFF not contest? I'm not saying it's an EFF position. But I'm saying, why is the EFF? Everybody is fielding his or her candidate. You are always looking at other people's candidates. Why can't you fill your own candidates? And even ANC people and DA people who are somehow talking to the EFF informally, they are being disrespectful because they speak about their candidates. They don't say, EFF, can you give us something? So that disrespect must come to an end. I, 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 I don't take it very kind. I think it, before it was understandable, not now. And uh, Mashaba's plea if you go and talk to him, has always been, please release the EFF people to come. I want to lead with them because I've seen a huge potential in the EFF than in my own political party. And this thing of EFF refusing to release these people is making it impossible for me 
to run an effective uh, municipality because I can see talent uh, in the EFF. So that decision will be taken and will be communicated uh, once all of these proposals uh, are being looked into. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so just uh, two questions. Um, one is a follow-up to this one. If the EFF were to contest indep independently for running the city of Joburg, what do you think the party should tackle first, um, if it were to win? And then secondly, in terms of uh, the, the discussion topics for the policy conference, we know that the documents will be coming out later, but what are some of the key things? You mentioned the international relations aspect, obviously the land. What are the key things that delegates will, will be discussing in the conference? Well, uh, one of the first things that we need to deal with when we take over the municipality is the issue of development in the black communities. There is no serious focus on developing uh, black communities. There is no infrastructure in black communities. Uh, so we want to make sure that there is proper infrastructure in black communities. And we must make sure that that infrastructure comes with employment of locals. So the money that comes from Johannesburg, which is paid by Johannesburg people, must benefit the people of Johannesburg, both in terms of development and uh, employment. We want to insource all the workers. We don't want to create the issue of tenders. It's an issue here of uh, AfriRent uh, winning a tender of cars. And the question we ought to ask is, why is the municipality outsourcing cars, for instance? Don't we know where they sell cars? Can't we get someone in the municipality to go and take, not even a quotation, pictures, because the cars <laughs> yeah. have got a price on the whistle, and say one car will be so much, and compare and buy our own cars. And as in when they get old, we sell them and buy the new ones. Sell them, buy the... So to avoid these speculations that no so-and-so bribed so-and-so, this one, this one, let's just internalize some of these services through building state capacity and uh, uh, insourcing. The, at the center of our conference is how do we build the socialism? So everyone else should respond to that question. So if you go into a commission of battle of ideas, which is communication, how do we use communication to attain socialism in our lifetime? Because we are a socialist movement. But central to that socialism is the land question. That there will never be socialism without the ownership of the land. We want the land to be owned by the state and given to our people. So we'll be assessing whether land occupation has worked. Should we continue with it? Uh, have we made the necessary you know, inroads towards making the ruling party and other parties to adopt this expropriation of land uh, without compensation? There is a problem in South Africa of health. It's a problem in South Africa of education. We ought to make education accessible from uh, 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 early, childhood early childhood development until the first degree. It must be free. So delegates are going to discuss that. We want primary health care. And some people are arguing that, no, we actually need tertiary hospitals, not that thing of primary health care, because in tertiary hospitals we can accommodate even the primary health care, but primary health care can't deal with tertiary issues, but tertiary can deal with primary. So we're having that discussion because in South Africa, the public health system has collapsed. Uh, there is no hospital that we can refer to as the type of a hospital we want to build in this country. So those are amongst many other issues uh, that uh, uh, will be dealing with uh, DP on, yeah. on, on, on discussion documents. Yeah, that, 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 those are the central issues. And, and, and a clearer focus on the economy as well. Of what do we do with an economy that has been stagnant for many years, uh, has not been absorbing people into employment? 
what do we do? What is our interpretation of the fourth industrial revolution? And what are the challenges that we come with? So that is that is broadly what we're going to be looking into. And then of course the organizational redesign perspective will form a part of the discussions in all the commissions. So that is basically what we're going to be looking into. In relation to the conference and specifically with the video that came out from the Malay, there are people who are saying that this conference is purely to just rubber stamp the list that has already been uh, welcomed and put in place. What is your response? That's their view. I mean, uh, conference, all types of things happen. That's their view. Uh, 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 we didn't call conference. The constitution called for conference. So it's not like we said somewhere and said, no, let's go and rubber stamp something. No, we are required to be here. We must be here, whether we like it or not, we are here. And then all types of issues uh, will be raised. You know, leadership is discussed everywhere. People have preferences. Uh, I was uh, learning this morning that some of the leaders are even calling uh, regions uh, and saying, hey, I thought you are my friend, but now your region is not even nominated. <laughs> so the levels of uh, disparations have gone to that level. You can't do anything about it. People are trying all types of things. Does it violate, uh, violate the, the constitution? No. Does it undermine the integrity of the EFF? No. So, so be it. It must be criticized. Uh, this list or that list, uh, let people say what they want to say, really. I mean, uh, we didn't call ourselves. We are convened here by the constitution of the EFF. We are not bought somewhere and said, let's go and endorse some list yeah. and come, come, come. No, we are convened here by the constitution of uh, the EFF. Whether we want to be here or not, if it was my wish, we should just continue like this. Eh? But there's nothing I can do. Like Mkretama, when we went to the <laughs> first conference, <laughs> when we went to the first conference, Mkretama said, President, can't you just read the list? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't do that. So we are all going to be subjected to that test. Um, yeah. Just a point of clarity, Bizaga from Mission Report. Sure. Um, in terms of your committees, will you have chairs of committees that yeah. you could possibly engage with before uh, uh, the. I'm not yeah. sure if it will happen yes. before, but the, the chairs and the scribes will be there. Uh, and then um, when commissions come to report, the scriber of the commission, the chair of the commission will come to make those. Uh, but if there is a special request, uh, I'm not sure if we have concluded the scribing and the chairing of uh, commissions. But the names are not there. We have just, uh, we have not yet come yeah. so But uh, it's not, a, it's not a, a big issue. If you want to engage someone, who's presiding over a particular commission, uh, surely communication will make sure that such people are available. LNC, I see, um, I've spoken to a couple of your members who have yeah. been talking about the constitution of the EFF and how they want changes and amendments of the constitution. Is that open to debate? It is. The constitution, the constitutional amendments, is actually going to be say, is going to serve in the plenary mm. because some of its implications may affect the elections of uh, top six or even additional members. There are people who say increase the number of uh, additional members. There are people who say no, reduce the officials. And so it will come. And then in the plenary, uh, but it's not going to come in a rowdy manner. Uh, it will have to be this province, uh, supported by this province, moves for this type of an amendment. Then we can put that amendment. Uh, uh, to the constitution. But there are certain fundamentals. So even if you change the constitution of the EFF, you can't deviate from the founding manifesto of the EFF, which are core founding principles of the EFF. So let's say, for instance, someone says, let's do away with cardinal pillar number of tenders. Seven. Number seven. Let's so we'll have a workshop <laughs> like this. <laughs> when someone says, no, that uh, clause on tenders is wrong. Uh, uh, let's not have a, 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 a cardinal pillar that says we are going to scrap tenders. We must have tenders uh, and all of that. 
the founding manifesto will not agree because those are the founding principles. They are non-negotiable. They are founding principles of uh, the EFF, it, like expropriation of land uh, without compensation. You can't change it and say, no, guys, after speaking to so many people, we think now we must say expropriation of land with compensation, with or without compensation. Under the EFF government, it will be done like that. But what happens when the EFF is not in government is give and take. There will be areas where people say, no, we, we agree with you, we are going to expropriate, but we want to pay. And we'll tell them, if you pay, you don't have our vote, but if you expropriate, you've got our vote. So, um, we, 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 we are ready to listen to that. The centrality of uh, the central command team is non-negotiable. Now, this is how EFF works. And from time to time, when uh, the middle class makes noise, leaders of the EFF get tempted mm -hmm. to want to move away from what is the EFF. So the EFF, it's, a, it's an organization that is run from a central point. Mm -hmm. So there are no provinces, actually. So these provinces you see are purely for coordination purposes. The EFF is run centrally as a central command. Mm. The decision of the central command binds on all of them. And, uh, and that decision will be taken after conversing the ground as to what are the views of the branches and members of the EFF on these matters. Once a view has been conversed, leadership will come and take a decision. That decision binds on all of us. Many people go mad when that time comes because they do not know what they've joined. <laughs> they don't know what they've joined. Many of them want to cry after. So at least we've got access to them. Tell them this is how it is. Either they accept it or they go. We make this statement all the time. We make no apology about it. They can leave us being 10. Yes. Better few, but better. Yes. Of quality that appreciate what they've joined. That's very much at that moment. Every time there is dishing, they dance. Mm. Yeah. But they don't know how to cook. Mm. So, we, we work like that. In the EFF, there's only one office and that office is going to be opened very soon you'll be invited decisions that are taken from there are non-negotiable they're not open for discussion we're running a tight ship papa we're not playing that's why it has survived for so many years had we allowed it to be a loose cannon they would have done what they did to the uh, cope to the eff they tried many at times that's why there's always an attempt. Mm -hmm. It doesn't succeed because of the type of policy we've adopted as the EFF. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from power. Just a quick one on uh, as a side note. You spoke about the economy and uh, yeah. your minister was the, uh, uh, on the podium on Wednesday. Any expectations mm -hmm. from the EFF? Um, when Tidombo, when he uh, delivers his medium No, well, we've well, given up on Tito. I mean, he, that policy released, um, um, even without discussing it with the ANC, his party and the alliance, tells you which direction these people are taking. Um, they want to privatize everything. They want to uh, please white capital because they are saving through the mandate of white capital. It is white capital that gave them money and they have to make sure that they repay that money. Look, people can't spend one billion, one billion on you and expect them to make one billion back. You know, it's not an investment. These people are still going to make billions. They have put one billion and they expect to make billions. And any policy that comes from Tito and Syria is going to do exactly that. We have seen in South Africa where there is an acceptance of state capture when it is done by certain people. 
a man appoints a person with metric, it's not an issue. SARS is still going to have a shortfall. Mm. No, SARS is performing very well. The problem is that the target you have put is unreasonable. But if it was Tom Moyan, you are not going to say the target is unreasonable. We've seen this hypocrisy under Ramaphosa's regime. And uh, really, we, the, we, let's go to the ground. The state-owned enterprises, all of them. Pravin is running them down. Look at ESCO. The man himself says, you asked him question, do you think you are the man for the job? He says, if I was, I would have applied for it. <laughs> I've never applied for it. So he tells you, he's not a man for the job. There is still no crisis. <clears throat> no one is fighting that the man is not a man for the job. But if it was Zuma, so something else. ESCO. ESCOM press conferences are, are run by Daily Maverick, you guys don't have a problem. But if somebody had said in a press conference, ANN7 asked me to convene a press conference today because they don't have, you, you, all of you will be like, eh, hey, capture. <laughs> capture, capture this, capture that. So we are allowing this mess to go on and on, but the EFF, we don't complain. We are working the ground. That's all we do. The response will be, to go to the ground. These people have changed the track now. They've moved from the streets because they're not winning the battle on the streets. They've gone to the courts. And they're using the same apartheid tactics. Apartheid used physical structures called prisons to lock those they disagreed with. They use money now. They take you to court and lock you up with one million. If you can't pay one million, you must shut up. Otherwise, we're going to take you to a new prison called One Million uh, Lawsuit. And the courts, wittingly or unwittingly, are, failing into, are falling into the trap of silencing freedom of expression and exercise of political rights. Because people who have money can imprison you by imposing heavy, heavy lawsuit on you. And that will silence you. If you say opposition parties can't say the things they are saying and you sue them one million, all of them, the freedom of speech will go away, the political rights will go away, there will not be opposition in South Africa. Because opposition survive through freedom of speech and the political rights. We can't give people RTP houses. We can't give people uh, social grants. We can't give people jobs. We are not government. All we do is to expose the shenanigans of government so that we have a, a transparent government. So if the judges were like they want to be now during the payback the money uh, time, we will not be where we are today. Zuma would have been protected, Zuma would have sued someone one million, all would have been silenced, and Zuma will still be president. I'm not saying our courts are doing that, but I'm saying they ought to be very, very, very careful, particularly when it comes to freedom of expression and exercise of political rights. If you take those two away, the political freedom are done. And you can be happy because they are taking it as taking it away from us. From us, they are coming to you, uh, press freedom. They will take it away. So no one who will, by the way, will fight it in court. We are not scared. We will go and fight it in court. We don't care whether the environment is conducive or not. Law is law, and law is dealt with on the basis of principles of law and facts, not on the basis of who appears before you. That's how we defeated uh, Sanef, Polifan Vig, and all of them combined, because uh, law is law. Natasha, no, it's uh, fine. He asked my question. Okay. Anyone else? I know the African sun is beginning. I'm getting yeah. silent complaints. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the African sun was a new. So, so just on your, <laughs> on your last point on the characterization of the new dawn. Yeah. I know within uh, the EFF, there's also people who feel like the EFF is not as harsh enough as was. I know of uh, an event where the DP was involved with another. I don't remember of the EFF as to whether the EFF is strong enough in not just talking to us now about the matter, but taking the extreme steps that it took during the Zuma administration and start the EFF and stuff like that. Do you feel that is a, 
correct criticism. Second, on the redesign of the organization, where does that put the EFF student command and also is there a discussion around the formation of an EFF winners league? Well, uh, you know, you will never satisfy everyone. During Zuma's time, we were told we were extreme, we were irresponsible and all of Now we are trying to be what you said we should be and be politicians <laughs> and do properly. When we do properly, yeah, it's not right. That's why you ought to stand for something. If you don't, you become a political amoeba. You will be shapeless. So, uh, the EFF <coughs> during Zuma's time, it didn't just start with noise. It went, it went, it went, it went, it went. And when the Constitutional Court said, this is wrong, then the ANC people tried to defy the Constitutional Court, the strategy to be something different. Because now you are defying the highest court. Several emails are in court. Bravini's uh, thing is in court. The rogue unit is in court. So, but even with that, we are still pushing uh, 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 in parliament. So, politicians at all material times must read uh, the balance of forces and the material conditions at all times. Don't just be jajarah, jajarah, jajarah. You end up irritating people. By the time you hit Cyril, everyone else will say, but they gave him chance. And he himself failed. They tried everything, the man failed. The, the, that man is a maneuver, so you don't uh, just become a, a reckless like that. Both of them, Pravin and, and Cyril. So you ought to be very careful because you are fighting real capital then. Look at what Cyril did to my mind. All of you are saying Helen Zilli, Helen Zilli, not Helen Zilli, it's Cyril. So the day my man wrote a letter and then the public protector found against Cyril, and Helen came out saying that was the most stupid thing to do to write to that woman. Tony Leon came out and said that was the most, that's where the problem started yes. with the letter. Why? Musi by writing the letter and the emails coming out and showing names. He exposed the DA funders, the real owners of the DA. And you don't go after them and they allow you to do that. Every time when we fundraise money, people with money say to us, but why can't you just work with Cyril? Why? I mean, can you imagine they say that was? <laughs> what about Musi? So listen to what Herman says and what Musi say. They say, we joined the DA to destroy the ANC, not to join the ANC or the faction in the ANC. Go and listen to that video. That's what tells you what's happening. They are being told, work with this guy. You must work with this guy. This is our man. Mm. This is our man. Eh? And Musi tried to defy them and he thought he's got a life of his own. That's when they showed him who are the real owners. The real owners, the people who give DA money. When finally the emails come out and you see the names of the people who funded CR70, when compare the notes with who's funding the DA, it's the same people. And you want to expose them by exposing their men and think you can still lead their party. They say that to us. Why can't you just work with Sri and all of that? But we tell them, no, it's not going to happen. That is not even negotiable. So, so, so Cyril killed Musi. By doing that, Cyril killed the DA. The DA will struggle to recover from that mess. So Cyril destroyed it. I think in the ANC's analysis, wherever they are, they are celebrating that we have successfully destroyed that project because of Capitec money. The men put money in the CR 17. And, and the, the Capitec men, the same man goes and investigates yeah. uh, uh, in the DA. But what do they call that? Uh, review, committee. review committee. The man who financed uh, uh, Ramaphosa <laughs> goes and investigates a uh, review the DA, uh, including 
Tony Leon, who said Musi is stupid, he has already proclaimed before going into that review committee that you are a stupid by writing a letter to that woman. And then the same person who said you are a stupid publicly must now review you. So it was clear the guy won't survive. Cyril destroyed that, uh, uh, you know, uh, DA. So what was the second one? Redesign. Women's the, League. The student the command is part of us. It's part of the EFF coast, uh, structures. The redesign is going to deal with establishment of the youth uh, command and the women's command. That mandate was there in the previous conference. We couldn't fulfill it. The organizational report will give that account. Based on that account, then the delegates will decide, do we really want to continue with this mandate or what do we do? So we're leaving it in the hands of the delegates. Okay, guys, thank you so much. Thank you. And thank uh, you. there's water for you there. Where? Uh, yeah. Just behind <laughs>